Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm answering questions from the textbook of the IAL International A Level Pearson's at Excel Pure Mathematics P3. This is from Chapter 4, which is about trig addition formulae. Uh, exercise 4F, question number one. Now, the, the, the questioner or the the viewer has asked me to answer questions A, C, E, and a few other questions. I'm going to do A, C, and E, and hopefully I will have set the viewer on the right tracks and they should be able to do the others by themselves. If they still have a problem, of course, you're welcome to uh, ask me. But I would like to, I don't want to like, you know, just do everything. I want to make sure that I'm teaching you what to do and then you can, you're able to do the rest by yourselves. Okay, so for the first question here, it says prove the following identity. So this is all about proving identities. And this is a topic where many students um, do have an issue. And the reason that they have an issue is because sometimes you cannot see the whole journey in front of you. You cannot see every step before you start. You don't know exactly what steps you're going to take until you somewhere near the end. All right. So that's one of the reasons why people have problems with this topic. So, all right, how am I going to prove that this becomes that? Or even you can go the other way if you want to. Now, um, there are a few tips that will help you to understand what to do. First of all, here we're dealing with, as you can see, double angles and, you know, single angles. So cosine 2a and you've got cosine a, sine a, and so on. So we can see that if we're going from left-hand side to right-hand side, which you don't actually have to do, you can go both ways if you want to in most cases if we're going from left <coughs> left hand side to right hand side we can see everything has become single angles the double angle has gone so we should know our double angle formula and so that's something very important for the rest of the questions as well now the double angle formula are not given to you in the formula book for edxl um a level exams although they are for the cambridge ones but not for the edxl ones so you have to know what they are and it's not really that difficult but if you do ever forget what they are you can just use the formula book to kind of derive them so for example we know that the sine of a plus b this is the way it's given in the formula book this is for the addition formula um, sine of a plus or minus b is equal to the sine of a times the cosine of b plus minus so if it's a plus it'll be a plus between them minus is a minus between them the cosine of a times the sine of b something like that now if we've got a double angle for example in this case we don't have one button for, for sine but just just to to show you if you have a double angle for example sine of a 2a it will be sine of a plus a which is the sine of 2a so all of these will be a's and there'll be a plus between them so you'll have sine a cosine a plus cosine a sine a so basically you've got two of the same thing so you end up with two times the sine of a times the cosine of a so that's the double angle formula for the sine of 2a <clears throat> for the cosine you have cosine of a plus or minus b and the formula goes like this you have the cosine of a times the cosine of b minus plus the sine of a times the sine of b Okay, so that's how the formula goes. You'll see this in the formula book. So if you want to derive the formula for the cosine of 2a, well, the cosine of 2a is going to be, basically, you have cosine a times cosine a minus the sine of a times the sine of a. So this is cosine squared of a minus the sine squared of a. All right, so that's one formula for cosine 2a. And because we know... One of the fundamental identities is sine squared of a plus cosine squared of a equals one. This is like uh, one of the fundamental identities that we should know from even from P2. Um, the sine squared of an angle plus the cosine squared of the same angle is always equal to one. So therefore, I can replace, for example, if I want to have cosine 2a in terms of um, cosines, okay, then I can replace the sine squared a with 1 minus cosine squared a. So I can write this as cosine squared a minus, and then sine squared a would be the same as 1 minus cosine squared a, just rearranging that. So you'll end up with cosine squared a 
minus 1 plus cosine squared a, which will give you 2 cosine squared a minus 1. And if you want to replace um, the cosine squared a with sine squared a, you have 1 minus 1 minus sine squared a minus another sine squared a. So you end up with 1 minus 2, two sine squared a. 2 sine squared a. Okay, so these are some of the formulas that we should know. And really, they should be memorized by the time we take the exam. So that's one of them. And this is another one. Let me just write down that part. Cosine 2a. Cosine of 2a equals. So that's another one here. You can also use this one here. And you can also use this one over here. Those are all forms of the double angle formulae converting into single angles. Okay, so these will ha actually help us for most of the questions in this exercise, right? So these are the main, these are the, you know, the ones I've highlighted are the formulae that we need to use in this type of uh, question. And um, these are just how we got them, how they're derived from what we do have in the formula. But really, you should know them by the time you get to the exam after having done so much practice. Now... Here I think it will be easy to go left-hand side to right-hand side. So what I'm going to do is, I can see, uh, so how do we go about doing this? How are we going to make this look like that? Well, the first thing I can see is that we have here a double angle. In our answer, there's no double angles. So I'm going to think about using one of these to rewrite cosine 2a in a way that makes us have single angles. And there's something that I can spot that's going to help me. I can spot it straight away. That we have here cosine a plus sine a. And here we have cosine a minus sine a. And I can see that this, this form here is a difference of squares. And that seems to be something that will help us here. Okay. So if I rewrite cosine 2a as cosine squared a minus sine squared a. And that's over what well, we have here, cosine a plus sine a. I know that this can be rewritten as a difference of squares. We know that x squared minus y squared gives you x plus y times x minus y if you factorize, right? So this will be in one bracket cosine a plus sine a times the other bracket cosine a minus sine a and that's over and here we have cosine a plus sine a so now hopefully you can see that it's all going to work out because this cosine a plus sine a is a factor of the denominator numerator sorry and cosine a plus sine a is a factor of the whole of the denominator they will cancel out okay it's a common factor in this fraction so that will leave us with cosine a minus sine a as required so we've proved it okay so we proved it just the simple step first of all of rewriting cosine 2a as cosine squared a minus sine squared a and then you know as writing this in a factorized form difference of two squares they cancel out you've got your answer okay so that's like a, a quick way of getting to the answer i'm i'm sure even if you go writing it in this form or this form, in the end you could still get there, but maybe with a bit more hassle. This is a bit easier way for us to get there. But there's something that we have to um, you know, look out for, these kind of patterns. So we started off maybe not understanding exactly how we're going to do it, but we just thought this has to change to a single angle, and we looked at these three forms, and then because we have like cosine a plus sine a, cosine a minus sine a, that should remind you of difference of squares, so we said let's write it in this form here. Okay, so that's how you would do part A. All right, now I'm going to do part C. The, the, the student actually asked me for A, C, E, and a few others. I'm going to do A, C, and E, and then I'm going to move on to um, something else. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to go through all of the questions that were requested because hopefully uh, the student should have understood what to do by the time I've done the first three questions. And if not, as I said, you can ask. So I'm going to do question C. 
and hopefully you get the idea of what to do. So again here, um, I think, of course, in this case, it's much easier going from left-hand side to right-hand side. Okay, so I'm going to start off with this. And I can see straight away, again, we have, uh, you know, double angles becoming single angles. So that's the first thing I'm going to um, address. I'm going to make single angles, in, uh, double angles into single angles. So... For the sine two theta, there's no there's no choice. You just can uh, this can only become sine two sine theta times cosine theta. But for the one minus cosine two theta, there is a choice. I can write it as either um, the cosine two theta part. Sorry, I can write it as two cosine squared theta minus one, or I can write it as one minus two sine squared theta. All right. So which one of those am I going to choose to use? Okay, I have to end up with tan theta. Now, I know that the tangent of an angle, that's another one of our, our, our fundamental identities, is equal to the sine of the same angle divided by the cosine of the same angle. So again, I'm going to use some logic here, right? I'm going to use some logic here for me to be able to answer this question. That means I want to really ideally end up with sines on the numerator and cosines on the denominator for me to get tan theta. So for that reason, I'm going to change cosine 2 theta into this form because that will leave me with something in terms of sines in the numerator. So this will be 1 minus, now be very careful about the bracket here because there's a minus in front of it. You have cosine 2 theta is the same as 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. All right, so I've changed the cosine 2 theta into 1 minus 2 sine squared theta and the sine 2 theta into 2 sine theta cosine theta. That was the first identity that we showed. All right, so now let's simplify this. You have 1 minus 1, which is 0. zero. So I'll just write it out as show my steps. 1 minus 1, and then you have, it's going to be plus 2 sine squared theta over 2 sine theta cosine theta. So I can now see how this is going to work out. Because 1 minus 1 is going to be 0. So you end up with 2 sine squared theta, which I'm going to now write as 2 sine theta times sine theta, just to make it clear. Okay, because 2 sine squared theta is 2 sine theta times sine theta. Over 2 sine theta times cosine theta. And what happens here? They cancel out. 2 cancel out. And you're left with sine theta over cosine theta, which, as we mentioned, is equal to tan theta. And we have completed the question as required. Okay, so again, you might not be able to see the whole journey from the beginning, but just using the identities that we know and just using a little bit of logic. For the sine 2 theta, there's no choice. For the cosine 2 theta, well, you have to think to yourself, I know I have to end up with tan theta, which is sine theta over cosine theta. So the only way I'm going to end up with sines in the numerator is if I rewrite this as 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. That's, that's the logic behind that. And then it all works out. So sometimes you don't see the picture, but... The logic kind of helps you out. You just follow some some logical steps that kind of, uh, you know, you, you keep an eye on what your answer should look like and then accordingly adjust things in, in that way. And it normally works out quite easily, right? So there's the answer to part C. Now I'm going to answer part E. And then after that, I'm going to leave you to do it by yourself, all right? So part E... Um, Okay, so here we have 2 sine cube theta cosine theta plus cosine cube theta sine theta equals sine 2 theta. Well, how do we sort this one out? Well, I see something here in these two terms. I see in these two terms that there is a common factor in both of those terms of sine theta and cosine theta. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write take out those two common factors. So I've got sine theta and cosine theta as common factors in these two terms. Okay, that leaves us inside this bracket. All right, if I've taken out sine theta and cosine theta from here, all right, I'm left with sine squared theta in this one. If I, if I expand that, that's going to give me sine cubed theta, sine cosine theta. And what's left in this one, if I take out sine theta, cosine theta from this, I'm left with cosine squared theta. 
Okay, so if I expand this, it's going to be the same as that. Exactly. I'm going to have sine cube theta, cosine theta, and sine theta, cosine cube theta. Same thing as this, right? So now what happens here is this will become, well, we know that sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. So this is going to be one. So this leaves us with two sine theta times cosine theta times one. Okay, which is just two sine theta cosine theta. Okay, just multiply by one, it stays the same. And we know our identity for the double angle formula for, for two, sine two theta is exactly this. So this is going to be therefore sine of two theta. So finished, very simple as required. Okay, so there's the answer. It's a pretty simple one once you factorize out the common factors. Um, how did I know I was supposed to do that? Well, that's the only thing I can really do here. I can't do anything else with this, really, to be honest. I can't really change them very easily um, or do anything else with it. But I noticed that there's a common factor in these two terms, which is sine theta, cosine theta. Once you've taken those factors out, this thing becomes just one. And remember, don't make the mistake that's... It's not sine theta plus cosine theta equals one. That's wrong. No, it has to be, they have to be squared. Okay, so a lot of people make that mistake. So if somebody might hear, for example, in a question like this, they might think that this, this is equal to one. Okay, and that's not actually correct. Okay, this is not equal to one. Okay, uh, this is equal to one. All right, so there's the answer to part E. Now the other questions, as I said, I will answer them if the student you know, doesn't get what to do after this. Hopefully, what I've explained, if you follow the same type of logic, use the same identities and just apply them kind of logically to the question, you should get the answer quite easily. All right, so, um, but if you do have a problem still, just leave a message and I'll get back to you there. Sorry, I haven't answered these questions for a long time. I've taken a bit of a break after the exams, but um, I'm back like kind of semi doing a bit of work here and there when I feel like it. Anyway, so I'll um, leave it there. Thank you for watching. Other questions from this particular um, chapter of this book, or chapter? F well, this is from chapter four um, from the P3 book, uh, Trig Addition Formula. Other questions from that particular chapter can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions from just additional formula from P3 uh, and Excel can be found in this playlist you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the list uh, on the clicking on the link over here and you can watch a video up here which will show you how to use my channel efficiently thank you for watching and see you soon